How's it going, everybody? This is going to be another podcast from the crew that is uh, never been seen before, uh, and by that I mean who's been doing the podcast for the last couple of times, and that is not Travis, and not Mike. I just wanted to join in oh, on the gosh. fun. Oh gosh, we're con- we're we're continuing this. Okay. Oh, well. well, anyway. To get things started, we're going to be doing um, another one of the topics that I thought of. I don't know how I thought of this, but it was really just on the topic of how games age. And we're going to start again with kind of a general question about this, and then move on from there. And one of the and some of the some of the things to consider is um, on how games age, like which games aged well, which games did not age well, Um, and at the same time, like. At the same time, like, which games do not age well, but, like, you still see their influence to this day. And, like, for an example of it was, like, Mario 64. Literally, a whole genre is kind of, like, based around that. But at the same time, if you go back from playing, like, say, Galaxy 2 back to Super Mario 64, it's not really... You can see it didn't really age well, I guess is a better way to say. So it's kind of a weird topic. So what comes to mind for for you, Travis and Mike... Or, sorry, not Travis and not Mike, when somebody says, like, how games age, what do you think of immediately when you see that? Um, how games Any, age? Either one of you. Uh, I, I always just think back of like what games that I loved playing as a kid, and I'll still go back to them and pretend that they're still fun. Cause I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure on numerous occasions, um, sophomore year, Mike would come back from class, and I was playing N64 or my uh, Mario 64. And I, I was like, I loved this game so much. And then, then next thing he knows, I'm yelling at it because the camera is like looking at this random wall and it's stuck <laughs> and I'm not able to make a jump. And then the stupid random platforms would disappear from under my feet. And then, then I'm like, I just love this game. Uh huh. So that's what so I So it's just, so honestly, nostalgia is carrying you at that point. Nostalgia honestly, is I, the only thing that really uh, carries me to, I mean, which, but at the which, same okay, end, so I'm me, also now playing older games instead of newer games, so yeah, it, it's weird. Well, I, I, will say, I will say this, though, because uh, before, uh, sorry, before, before Mike, I did actually go back and I am actually replaying uh, Super Mario 64 right now too and from in my opinion i didn't think it aged too badly but in my mind i can still see what other people mean why if, if they ever go back to it how they can say it aged badly because i can definitely see where they come from and i agree to i agree to that extent compared to like what's out nowadays but i do think nostalgia has more of a ties for me to say it's not so mike what do you think well that's the thing i wanted to say about it too is like and this might be a, a good point of debate because we might disagree on this yeah but like modern yeah. games today are almost objectively better. They have better graphics, the frame rates are better, the controls are almost always yeah. better. The only thing that really brings us back to the old games is that they were new like that and that they're nostalgic. Like when you compare Mario 64 to like Mario 3D Worlds, it's obvious like from mm-hmm. an objective standpoint, Mario 3D Worlds better. You can do multiplayer, <laughs> there's more levels, the graphics look better, the controls are better, you know? But a lot of people would say Mario 64 is still better. But the only reason for that is, well, at the time, you know, it was innovative and it's nostalgic. It's a game that we go back and enjoy. So I think as far as like how games age, I think what keeps a lot of those games alive is the fact that we enjoyed them as younger kids. If you were to play Mario 3D World first, I don't think we would enjoy Super Mario 64 nearly as much. You know what I mean? Oh, no, not at all. And so like, because N64 games now aren't good. But the reason we say Ocarina of Time is a legendary masterpiece is because when it came out, it was a legendary masterpiece. And even though now, again, objectively, Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword are probably better because they control better, people say Ocarina of Time is better. People might argue People might argue with you on the Skyward Sword part on that, man. <laughs> but I, well, yeah, I guess because the controls on that people don't like. So that's a bad example. Twilight Princess. We'll say Twilight Maybe Princess. Maybe if you say Wind Waker. I would say Wind or, Waker. Yeah, maybe. Wind Waker. Any of the games that aren't motion controlled, basically. <laughs> because they yeah. just control better. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. But we again, you know, and you would say Ocarina of Time is your favorite Zelda. Pars- not mm-hmm. completely because of nostalgia, but that's a big part of it. Because if you would have oh, played... Oh, it's a huge part yeah, of it. Yeah, because if you would have played Ocarina of Time after Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and stuff, you probably wouldn't have said that, you know? And that's kind of how I feel about Super Mario World, because that's my favorite of the classics. But if I had played, like, one of the newer games, I probably wouldn't feel that way. So it just kind of depends yeah. on that, you know? Mike, it's well, funny that you points- say that, too, is because... I never beat the Ocarina of Time as a kid because I was too stupid. And then <laughs> you guys are like, Zelda is like the greatest franchise ever. How could you not? It, so it then is, I beat Wind Waker. 
uh, while I was there, and then I went back to Ocarina of Time for my streams, and I'm like, this game is just, the Z-targeting is so off sometimes. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> That's what I, like, okay, so I definitely agree with you on that, uh, Mike, I, I'm with you, because for me, again, um, what I've what I've learned about myself and about a lot of the games that I love playing is that so much of them is when I was younger, so much of them is when I had a little bit more of an innocent look at them, and so I didn't see all the flaws that would, that would, like, come with all these games and whatnot, like, I didn't see all the glitchiness of Diddy Kong Racing, I just saw, thought that you could go in three different ways, and at one point I was racing against, like, an octopus or something like that, and I thought that, that was the most fun thing ever. Yeah. And th that's really what it is, and you're really looking at it with, like, the innocence of a child. And that's one of the reasons why nostalgia has such a big tie to these games that I've played. Like, I've played fun games nowadays, but they don't crack that top five that I've had or something like that, unless, like, they've, they've actually, like, done, um, unless, like, they've actually, like, blown me out of the water, but, I mean, it's very rare that I approach a game in the same way. But what, the one point that I wanted to make about how I think games age is, honestly, in games like GoldenEye, because I'll be honest, GoldenEye <laughs> for uh, the N64, holy cow, if you compare that game to any of the other, like, FPS games that are out nowadays, oh my God. it looks like it was, like, drawn by, it looks like it was drawn by a first grader, dude. It is horrible. And that was, like... And that, like, blew everybody away at the time. Like, me and my buddy Scott, before we were going to go out one night, we were playing it, and we were having the time of our life, but that's just because, like, we've played the game before, and it's just like, oh, this is really fun to us still. Yeah, that was, I like, the never game. Able... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was, like, the game. Mm -hmm. So, in, in my mind, that, like, on how games age, you can definitely say that a game did not age well if... Or you can definitely say it, it did not age well if somebody didn't refine it and improve upon the original formula. Mario 64, people improved on the formula. Same with, um, I would say same with Metroid, same with Zelda, same with, um, and then I would say maybe not in the same way for games that like had a huge shift, like I would say something like Final Fantasy. So with Final mm -hmm. Fantasy and whatnot, you, I think we still look back at those games like Final Fantasy 7 and 6 of being the greatest, but again, those were also revolutionary. But nowadays, if you look at the formula for, say, like Final Fantasy 12 or even games like Final Fantasy 14, which is basically an MMO, it's done so much differently that at that point, it's just changed. It's not like technically refined, it's changed. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Well, that bothers me. And you know my opinion on games like Final <laughs> Fantasy 15 and stuff. Uh, it well, you know, and we yeah. just talked about that in another video we recorded with like Assassin's Creed Origins and games like Call of Duty, where you know you have a formula that works, but then you change it so much because uh, you try to change it to fit the time period, which some people want, you know. Yeah. And like, if you talk to Pat, he loves Final Fantasy 15 so much to where he doesn't even want to mm -hmm. play the older Final Fantasy games because he ruined it for him. He likes he's the in, style. He's, yeah. And so it's, he's in he's in denial. Yeah. Well, but and like I kind of understand that because we're looking at it from you know going from old to new, but you know he's just going the opposite direction, and so he's going through that same thing where like, like with Sticker Star in you know Color Splash, you say you don't like it, but we say that because we played yeah. the original style, whereas Travis doesn't mind it because he started from the newer end. So it it depends where you start from, you know. It's almost like Color Splash is fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See. Uh oh. Don't start that again. <laughs> but it's almost <laughs> like reverse nostalgia, it's you fun. know, where like you're just starting from newer games, but when you work back, it's like, you know, you don't enjoy them as much. And so I, I think that's a big part of it, too. So like with evolving games, I think that's the problem, you know, is like you want to keep the original formula, whereas companies are like, I want to change to what modern gamers want, which is the reason like there's no collectathons out anymore. And ukulele was the only one and it yeah. did not sell well at all because it's just it's not the style yeah. anymore. Yeah, and ukulele was criticized because basically people wanted a banjo three, and ukulele was basically out there to basically do that. And, and so when people job. got it, they were just like, "Oh, it's too." Mu oh, I thought I thought it looked amazing too, but people are like, "Oh, it's too much like banjo kazooie," and they're just like, "Wait a second, isn't that what you wanted?" Yeah. So yeah, I I understand. Like I talked to Pat a little about a bit a little bit about this too. You got to modernize your games, but in the same way, I think the, the, one of the ways is like if we're talking about a game that I would say like aged well i can't really think of one because almost every single game that i've thought of has basically been refined to a point where if you go back and play it after playing a new one you're just like this is like archaic at this point mm -hmm. i do think so there's like one franchise that did do a good job of this i think is resident evil because five and six were awful but resident evil 7 did yeah. kind of stick to that because they did something that i liked where they did change it to first person which some people didn't like but what was cool is they kept the basics where you stay in a mansion you're trying to survive, you have limited ammo, things like that. So it didn't change the core. 
And I think that's super important for those games. Because Final Fantasy tore its core apart. They said, no, you're going to do a different combat system with cars and all kinds of different stuff. And it's like, this is not Final Fantasy anymore. You're just calling it that. Yeah. Whereas Resident Evil kept its core together. So... No, I, I, I get what you're saying. What do you think, Travis? I mean, because you've played Paper Mario, right? And I'm sure you've seen other people play, like, Thousand Year Door and whatnot. You yeah, I've been, so watching the, I've been watching the Game Grumps do Thousand Year Door, and then I'm still in the middle of my Color Splash one. Um, I mean, like, what I get out of Paper Mario, especially, is just, like, the charm of, like, the humor versus yeah. the actual, like, buddy battle mechanic, which I know is what Nick is all obsessed over. Just gameplay, having your buddy man. there. Just the whole gameplay. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Paper Mario. Paper Mario. <laughs> gameplay. Yeah, because, like, in, um... I, uh, I understand the Sticker Star uh, complaint, because you never, like, had the right cards to be able to, like, battle efficiently. But yeah. with, um... With Color Splash, like, it's not really an issue, because you can usually find cards like just as fast as you use them so it's not like a deal breaker and you pretty much always have like full paint especially once you level up a couple times so yeah. at to that point like it's not too different and like you're still doing the in battle like blocking and then like doing the right timing for the jumps and hammer stuff so like yeah. that battle, other than like you fill the card up with paint, it's not too different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. So I guess my question for you though, Travis, that if somebody said, if somebody basically like just took away your like just took away color splash, like if you said like one day like you really want to play color splash, you just took it away, and then sat you down with say thousand year door or or the Paper Mario for the sixty four. Um, what would you, like, I know you've seen other people play it, but what would you think of it while playing? I mean, this is, like, a weird thing, like, you'd have to, like, just imagine what your, what your situation would be like, but what would, what would it be like for you if you had to play that game? Because, yeah, you can go back and, you can go back to appreciate it. You, you can go back and appreciate what the game was, but how would you see the game? Would you see it as that, or would you see it as Color Splash is just so much better of a graphical improvement, um, like, and whatnot from there? I mean... I'm never one to be, like, a big graphics person, yeah. like, anyway, so I feel like in that sense, like, I never really care, so I wouldn't look at it like that, because, like, I said, the most, like, the part that I like about Paper Mario is just, like, the funny humor that they have, because it's just, like, yeah. so unique to it. It's a game that never takes itself very seriously, right. which is nice. Exactly, which I, that, like, that's what I like, and then since they've definitely kept that throughout the entire series i would i probably would like barely even recognize that like oh this like isn't color splash because i mean plus like the graphics aren't that like you know enhanced when it's paper you know mm -hmm. yeah and it's not like you're platforming yeah, well, yeah. that much in it either yeah well i guess i guess with a difficult topic with like how games age i guess i'm more asking what would you think of it, like, overall? Like, you'd have to compare it to something that you knew that was the same game. So, like, Pat, when he would play Final Fantasy XV, if he came back and played Final Fantasy X, he would be comparing it to the first Final Fantasy game that he would have. Yeah. It's one... I, so I'm wondering in that way. Not like... Yeah, so I like, guess I didn't say it right in, like, the question there. Yeah, I mean... I definitely, like, noticed the difference, especially with, like, not doing the cards, but I don't think it's too an extreme of... Final Fantasy, where it's, like, turn-based versus, like, free world type yeah. feeling. So, yeah. like, I, I easily see how Pat's like, you know what, I don't want to, I don't feel like touching the first Final Fantasy, because, like, the gameplay is so drastically different, which is fine. Yeah. I think um, the jump to Super Paper Mario is a bigger one, because that's the one that is, like, yeah. not turn-based at all. That is one that's, like, action-based, where you jump on enemies, like, normal and stuff. So that mm -hmm. would yeah. be a big And I still leap. like that system. It is a great I game. I still like that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, so like, for me, like, the gameplay in itself wouldn't change that much. So, like, I feel like the comparisons for those ones wouldn't be, like, as extreme. Whereas, like, Zelda, 
you can easily see the difference in platforming and just in itself, especially now that you can actually yeah. jump on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I find is just crazy, because, like, well, there's a couple of games where you can do that, though, if you have the Rock's Feather, but, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. Mike, that's, I guess, what I think about it, because, I mean, there's very few games that I think nowadays that we can say, like, aged well. I mean, there are games that I would think that would that would have been aged fine, but nostalgia literally ha give, keeps me from having that, or keeps me having that opinion. But I know, like, if there's anything that some people refined, they'll just say, "Oh, this game didn't age well." So that's what I was right. thinking about it. No, I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, because like, because yeah, like, in my opinion, you can well, go, Travis. Okay, because like, I mean, I've said this a couple, like, several hundred times now. Like, Halo to me was, you know, my beloved and Bay. And then four changed it, and then yeah. like I know five, Cody really really likes, like because he's all about like the online gaming part of it, and like I just don't care much mm -hmm. for online play usually anymore. Yeah, I used to, but um, so like objectively, Halo Five is the best game because you know it's got the highest graphics. You can do a bunch of shit in it. Well, Cody agrees with me, Halo 3 is the best. But, um, like, with things to do, Halo 5 is technically the best. And then, like, it's definitely got the best online. Like, there's no contest with that. Because they have so many different, like, uniquely yeah. online things with it. But, me personally, like, the series died, like, right after Reach. Well, and I think the reason for that Nostalgia. is, at the end of the day... Well, and on top of that, like, Halo, it evolved great as a game, but I don't think it evolved great as a Halo game, you right. know? Like, it lost yeah. its Halo on the way. It, as a game, it kept getting better, but, like, as far as keeping to the Halo core, it didn't, right. you know? It lost so, that like, somewhere. Halo is, to me, like, what Paper Mario is to Nick, where I wish exactly. they stuck a little more to the fundamentals of what I thought Halo was, but it's still a good game yeah, series. Yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah. No, I, I would agree. I would For agree. Sure. Like, like I still look back at Mario being good, but I mean, yeah. Like, and I guess to end this off, I would say all I think about this this main this main topic is I know I'm just reiterating a point at this uh, at this moment, but it's as as I said, like, like I guess uh, for a game that we can also have as another example is like Danganronpa, like. I'm sure that game would actually like we could probably say now it's like oh I could we at least in my opinion I could say that's probably gonna age well because it's very unique and it's a formula that's all specific to itself and even though you're playing the new games like you can still see it's not gonna deviate too far from you too far from the formula is what I would think mm -hmm. uh, maybe a couple more mm -hmm. mini games and whatnot so as long as people don't come along and refine it and literally give you a game that's objectively better and I'm saying like I'm saying like it might not be gameplay wise it might not be like story wise but just you can tell that it's like an improvement over the former game. You might not like it as much, but it is an improvement. Then it's not going to age well. Yeah, That's what I think. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. What do you guys want to say to finish this off? No, I think like pretty much what you guys have said, I think I agree with for the most part. Um, a lot of how we feel about how games age just comes down to nostalgia. Uh, it's probably too late to start talking about whether or not it's a good idea for games to do what Final yeah. Fantasy and Halo did as far as like letting That might go be a different court. podcast. Yeah, because I think that'd actually be a fun topic to, you know, explore in more detail. But the reality is that's what most games do. And so I think the question isn't how well do games age because, you know, games, as far as like the newer games come out, they always get better. Uh, it's more just, you know, how well do they maintain their core? You know, I think that's kind of the bigger question. Uh, and a lot of games, as we, you know, talked about, don't do that as well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Josh, do you want to I say think anything? we've covered, you know, I, th I think we've said nostalgia uh, blinds us at times, makes us stubborn and biased, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's who we are, so. Absolutely. Okay, America. sounds good. So, uh, again, yes, America. So we are going to wrap this up. So, again, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, all that jazz. If you have any comment comments or topics that you think we should do put them in the comment section below but besides that we have a lot of fun doing this uh so signing off this is nick and who not else mike is gonna sign off mike oh mike and not mike yeah, boom got it easy bye, bye.